Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today I'm looking at a pair of ELAC Unified Reference UBR62 bookshelf speakers. This is one of Andrew Jones' last designs when he was with ELAC before he left the company. This is a three-way bookshelf speaker design. I think it retails for around $12.99. So today we're going to tear this speaker down. We're going to go over the TS parameters of the drivers. We're going to look at the cabinet construction and then we're going to take a look at the crossover design. So let's get started. The ELAC UBR62 is a three-way bookshelf speaker that retails for $12.99 and has some heft to it with each speaker weighing almost 24 pounds. The speakers I purchased are finished in white oak, but are also available in black walnut if that color is more appealing to you. The front baffle on my pair is satin white, and the drivers are finished in black, giving it a nice modern appearance. The white oak finish is not real wood veneer, which is a bummer at this $12.99 price point. However, the vinyl finish is textured and appears to be quite nice and durable. As for the drivers, the UBR62 includes a 4-inch mid-range driver with a 1-inch tweeter in the center of that driver. To handle the bass notes, the UBR62 uses a 6.5-inch bass driver. On the back of the speaker are two pairs of binding posts that allow for bi-wiring or bi-amping. As for the specifications, the speakers have a frequency response of 41Hz to 35,000Hz. Sensitivity of 85 dB, impedance of 6 ohms, it can handle up to 140 watts. Cabinet dimensions are 8.25 inches in width by 14.125 inches in height by 13 inches in depth. The measurement I took for depth also includes the length for the binding posts. As for accessories, ELAC includes an owner's manual and a pair of magnetic grills. Now that I got most of the mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's get started with the teardown. Alright guys, I'm pretty excited to tear this speaker down. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the base driver. It's held in by four uh, three millimeter Allen screws. The base driver in the UBR62 uses an open basket design made from cast aluminum. The surround is made from butyl rubber and the cone is made from aluminum but incorporates some interesting technology called compound curvature. A typical speaker cone uses a simple conical or shallow dish shape, while a compound curvature cone is engineered with multiple curves to increase rigidity and reduce cone breakup. The voice coil in the bass driver appears to be about 2 inches in size and ELEC is using a couple of design techniques to keep it cool. The first one is by venting the voice coil underneath the spider, and the second is by using a vented pole piece. The vented pole piece also has a second function, which is to vent the trapped air behind the dust cap during long strokes. As for the motor assembly, it's pretty large for a 6.5 inch woofer. The magnet assembly measures 4.5 inches in width and is 1 inch thick. I can't wait to get this thing on the bench and measure BL, which will tell us the strength of the motor assembly. ELEC also paid attention to the small details like the speaker terminals, which are made from non-ferrous materials. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. Alright, let's see how much this base driver weighs. It's definitely got some weight to it. I'd probably say it's one of the heavier drivers I pulled out of the speaker in this price range. And it came in at 4 pounds and 15.2 ounces. For comparison, the base driver from my Polk Reserve R200 weighs 3 pounds and 7.5 ounces, and the base driver from my ELAC Debut Reference DBR62 weighs 4 pounds and 15 ounces. The impedance curve is smooth within this speaker's usable bandwidth. ELAC crosses over the mid-range at 260 Hz, so the cone breakup you see past 1 kHz won't be an issue. Now I'm going to compare the TS parameters between the base drivers of the UBR62 and the DBR62, because I'm sure some of you are interested in seeing how they compare. The resonant frequency of the UBR62 base driver measured at 46.6 Hz versus 46.9 Hz for the DBR62. Total Q measured at 0.4 for the UBR62 
versus .31 for the DBR62. BL, which measures the strength of the motor assembly, came in at 7.4 tesla meters for the UBR62 versus 8.4 tesla meters for the DBR62. I was surprised to see that the DBR62 has a stronger motor assembly than the UBR62. Even voice coil inductance was a tiny bit lower on the DBR62 at 0.53 millihenries versus 0.59 millihenries. The tolerances between the base drivers are very good. FS had a difference of 0.65% and ZMAX had a difference of 5.2%. Nice job, ELAC. So now I'm ready to remove the mid-range driver. This is actually a coaxial driver. So it's a four inch mid-range driver and then it has a one inch soft dome tweeter in the center of that driver. And it's held in by four three millimeter Allen screws. So let's get this thing removed and see what it's like. The 4-inch mid-range driver is a coaxial design and has a 1-inch soft dome tweeter in the center of it. These two drivers share the same voice coil, which I have read is a very expensive way to time align two drivers. The cone on the 4-inch mid-range driver is made from aluminum and uses a butyl rubber surround. The voice coil is very large for a driver of this size and appears to be about 2 inches in size. The tweeter is 1 inch in size and uses a soft dome with a wide surround. ELAC claims by using a wide surround, it improves both the low and high frequency extension of the tweeter, resulting in improved clarity and blending between the two drivers. Everything is housed in a cast basket, and the motor assembly uses neodymium magnets. Now let's get this coaxial driver on the bench and measure its TS parameters. The impedance curve for the mid-range driver is silky smooth all the way up to about 2800 Hz. At around 3 kHz, there is some cone breakup taking place, but this won't be a problem because the driver will cross over to the tweeter at 1800 Hz. Here are some of the TS parameters I measured for the mid-range driver. Resonant frequency measured just under 200 Hz. Total Q came in just a tad above 1, and voice coil inductance is low at 0.12 millihenries. The tolerances between the mid-range driver aren't as good as what I measured for the base drivers. The difference in FS is 7.7% and the difference in ZMAX is high at 21.5%. For the most part, the impedance curve for the tweeter is pretty smooth, but does have a knee in the curve around 1700 Hz. The resonant frequency of the tweeter measured at 1085 Hz. The tolerances between the two tweeter drivers are far tighter than those of the mid-range drivers. FS differs by only 4.5% and ZMAX by 3%. I like to see single digit differences and the tweeters performed well here. So now I'm going to remove this terminal plate. It's held in by 8 Phillips head screws. Um, this is where the binding posts are and also the crossover is mounted behind here. I don't know how far I'm going to be able to pull this out because the crossover and all its cables that go into the mid-range chamber up here, they're all sealed and glued in. So I don't know if it's going to give me enough length to pull everything out, but you know, we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, not quite going to be able to pull it all out, but we can still see it. So now let's take a look at these nickel plated binding posts, which I believe they're nickel plated. These are five way binding posts. Uh, it seems to be a pretty decent quality. Let's see if there's any ferromagnetic materials being used. Nope, nothing there. That's good. That's nice. Well, what about the nuts that fasten them to the back? And yep, there is some ferromagnetic materials being used that fasten the binding post to this terminal plate here. Just gonna double check on the other side as well because I can sneak down in there much easier, get it from the top. 
Yep, those are metal or steel. And so are the other ones. So now let's see if we can take a look at the crossover. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to pull this out from the box because it is all glued in. But we'll give it a shot and see if we can get a good look at this crossover for you. Here are the pictures that I took of the crossover. I couldn't fully remove it without breaking the glue bond on the wires going to the mid-range chamber, which I wasn't willing to do. I'm pretty sure the top board is for the coaxial driver. Sadly, ELEC is using metallized polyester film caps instead of metallized polypropylene caps. Polypropylene has far lower dielectric loss and sounds more transparent, so I'm disappointed they cheaped out on a $1,400 pair of speakers. You can also see a mix of air core and iron core inductors up top. For the woofer circuit, it's the usual budget combo, electrolytic caps plus iron core inductors. Most of the speakers I open at this price use the same low pass recipe, except for some of the older Bowers & Wilkins 600 series speakers. Crossover points for the UBR62 are 260Hz for the woofer to mid-range and 1800Hz for the mid-range to tweeter. Cabinet construction on the UBR62 is pretty decent for a pair of $1300 speakers. The cabinet is made from MDF and the front baffle is curved to help reduce diffraction. The coaxial driver is housed in its own chamber within the cabinet to prevent coloration from the base driver. The inside of the cabinet uses ELEX full perimeter bracing, which ties all the sidewalls together to help reduce any cabinet resonances. The front baffle is 7 8 of an inch thick at the center and 9 16 of an inch thick at the edges. The side walls are 3 quarters of an inch thick and the rear cabinet wall is 5 8 of an inch thick. There is also some nice damping material in the woofer and mid-range chambers, which will help absorb sound waves radiating from the back of the drivers. The exterior finish is made from vinyl and simulates a wood grain finish. The front baffle is painted white and in my opinion looks quite nice. Overall, I really like the appearance of the cabinet, but I am a bit disappointed that ELAC chose to use a vinyl exterior finish over a wood veneer finish. Port tuning for the UBR62 measured around 50 Hz. There are a few cabinet resonances that I measured which are circled in red. The spikes circled in yellow are cone breakup from the bass driver and won't be an issue because the bass driver won't be playing that high anyways. Here we go. I'm probably going to upset a few ELAC fans with my take on the Unify Reference UBR62s, but hear me out. The UBR62 is a good speaker, no question. But when you put it side by side with the Polk Reserve R200 and the Stark Sound Beta 7, the law of diminishing returns hits hard. Both of those alternatives cost significantly less, yet I actually preferred them in some areas. For imaging, the Polk Reserve R200 was noticeably better in my opinion. When it comes to bass, the Stark Sound Beta 7 simply outclassed both the ELAC and the Polk in low end extension and authority while holding its own in every other category. The UBR62 isn't bad by any means. It throws a wide soundstage, images respectably, and delivers adequate bass for a bookshelf speaker. What held it back for me was the mid-range. It felt recessed and lacked the forward presence and clarity I heard from the R200 and Beta 7. Also, the UBR62 isn't particularly efficient at 85 dB. If you do pick up a pair, Plan on feeding them a proper dedicated amplifier, because they will need it. Don't get me wrong, the UBR62 is a solid performer. It's just that at $1,300 a pair, I think there are smarter ways to spend your money. The best analogy I can come up with is this. You're basically paying Porsche money for Mustang level performance. If it were my money, I'd rather go with the ELAC debut reference DBR62, Polk Reserve R200, or the Stark Sound Beta 7. All three deliver similar or in some cases better performance while costing hundreds of dollars less. In fact, the savings are enough to add a quality subwoofer to any of them and still come out ahead. If you're a member of my channel, then please click on the members only sound demos in the description. In one of the sound demos, I try to illustrate just how close the performance is between the Polk Reserve R200 and the ELAC Unified Reference UBR62. And I think some of you might be surprised. I will also be creating a similar sound demo for members in the coming weeks, comparing the Stark Sound Beta 7 versus the UBR62. 
so stay tuned for that one. As always, this is my subjective opinion, and I would recommend all my viewers to try the speakers out for themselves. All of these speaker companies offer very generous and home trial periods and return policies, so don't take my word for it. Do your own comparison and judge for yourself if the UBR62 is worth the extra money. And that's my look inside video of the ELAC Unified Reference UBR62 bookshelf speaker. So long and happy listening.